So last time we talked about a lot, the, a lot of the parent functions, the basic graphs that we're going to have. Uh, we talked about the square root function, the squaring function, cubing function, absolute value function, a lot of basic guys that we need to know the shapes of. And those shapes will come out when you see the function and you know what the shape is. And what we're going to talk about today is how we can take that shape and move it around on the rectangular coordinate you know, plane. And I'm going to show you how we can graph without having to go to a t-table. Um, this is one of the first things that we ever saw whenever we were translating these guys. If you have your function, and you see a plus k on the outside here, okay. well, this plus k corresponds to a vertical shift. This corresponds to a vertical shift of k units. Now, when I say f of x plus k, this f of x right here is to represent your basic function. Like if it's x squared or the square root of x. It, you'd see something like the square root of x closed off and then plus a number. Okay? Or you'd see x squared plus or minus a number. The, the key thing here is that this number is not going to be inside the function. It's not going to be affected by the square or the square root or the cube. This guy is completely outside of that. We're going to run through some examples in just a moment. So uh, just the way something like this may look would be f of x is equal to x squared minus 5. When I look at this, we should be able to see this function for what it is, which is the squaring function. But then there's this minus 5 out here. If I cover up the minus 5, you see that you have x squared. So this minus 5, according to what I wrote up here, means you're going to be doing what? Right, that means you're going to be going down 5 units from whatever your basic shape was. And Doug, like you said, this x squared relate, you know, tells us that it's going to be a parabola. It's going to be that u-shaped guy. Or what if I were to write this? And down from where? The vertex or? You take all of the points. Everything you had, you okay. got to move everything down five units. Right. Exactly. Right. It's not just one or two points, That's but point the whole thing. Yeah. If I were to have this guy, the cube root of x plus two, notice the cube root, I'm stopping it right here after the x, and the plus two is outside. We should be able to look at this function and see clearly that this is based on the cube root of x. And we should have in our mind what that shape looks like because we went over those yesterday, right? Remember that's the one dance I didn't do, the worm? Kind of looks funny like that. So you take that shape and what does that plus two mean? Plus two means that you do exactly what you see, which is to go up two units. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. So we're, we're going to graph these guys in just a moment, but I want to go ahead and get these two main graphing techniques written down for you, and we're going to go back and actually graph things. Okay. The other type of translation we have is a horizontal shift. And that happens when I have an adjustment inside my function. Notice that this minus k is affecting your input, and what that means for us is that you have a horizontal shift horizontal shift of k units now remember when we were dealing with circles before and I told you that here's your basic form but the basic form has minuses there it has subtraction remember that and you remember what I said to do so that you could correctly identify those uh, the coordinates for your center You had to do the opposite of what you saw, right? So since I'm giving you a form that has a minus here, when you try to identify that k, which connects to your horizontal shift, you're going to do the opposite of what you see. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter what function that guy is inside. You take that shape and you shift it the opposite of what you see. Only if it's inside those parentheses, right? right. Well, this right here is to signify that it's inside your your function inside th that main operator for your function. If I were to write this, 
the absolute value of x plus 4. Okay. Notice that this main guy here is the absolute value, correct? And with the absolute value, there's a certain shape that I have associated with this in my mind. And it's that V shape, yes? Notice that my adjustment is being made inside, not outside of the absolute value, which means the order of operations is not to do the function first, but it's to do this adjustment. And then you would apply the absolute value. So the order is a little bit different. So if I do this, this means I'm going to shift which direction? Right, I see a positive 4, but since this form has a minus k, it's going to be shifted to the left 4 units. And here's, here's the way that I kind of think about it in my mind. This plus 4 means you get to start earlier, right? Where is your, where is your vertex on the absolute value function? at zero, zero. If I tell you that you get to start four units earlier, that means that vertex is now where? Negative four. It's shifted over to negative four, zero, because I'm giving you a head start, right? Likewise, if I were to give you this function, if I have the square root of x minus three, do you understand what the shape is here and where the shape is coming from? Who tells you the shape? The square root tells me the shape. And we saw this yesterday. We, we even completed a t-table of values to get that shape. So it's that kind of sideways half parabola. Now this minus 3 is inside the function. So it shifted to the right 3. Now, in terms of a head start, is a minus 3 a head start? No, that means you have to you get to you have to do what? Yeah, you have to wait, right? So where did the square root guy start? Where was his basic point, his main starting point? Zero. zero, zero. But if I say you can't have that, you've got to wait a while. You've got to wait three units before you can start that guy. So that means he's been he's been shifted to the right three units. You all agree with me on that? And let me give you a little acronym to maybe help you out here. Are you laughing? You like acronyms? I hod over. So from what we were just seeing up here with how things shift and how they move around, I stands for being inside the function. It gives you a horizontal shift <coughs> opposite of what you see. And this may affect the domain. If you're shifting left and right, of course, that can affect the domain. Now, what if your domain is all real numbers? If you shift all real numbers left or right, does that matter? No, your domain would still be all real numbers. Now, the over is very similar to what you see for the i hod. What do you think O stands for? Outside. If you have an adjustment made outside of your function, that relates to what? Vertical. That's going to give you a vertical shift, and you will do exactly what you see. And this can affect your range. And just think about it. If you have the squaring function, the parabola, what is the range for the parabola? Think if I drew my parabola right here, what's the range for that guy? It's 0 to infinity. If I shift this up or down, won't that also affect the range? Yeah. What if I shift this to the left or the right? Would that affect its domain? No, what's the domain for the parabola? All real numbers. All real numbers. So if you shift left or right, it's still going to be all real numbers. 